Is Maurizio Sarri to Chelsea really 100% off? I'm not so sure about it, but why and how exactly did it even get to this stage? And is Marino Granovskaya the one to blame? But the main question, who will be the new Chelsea manager? Or might we even end up, you know, keeping Antonio Conte simply because we can't get anyone else? Hello there guys and welcome back to 100% Chelsea for another episode of the Transfer Show. This is basically the show where we give you all the latest transfer news, manager rumours, you know, everything surrounding Chelsea Football Club that is out there throughout the transfer window. So, you know, if you want to know about that, make sure you subscribe. If you haven't already, we would massively appreciate that. And also let's see whether we can hit 600 likes because you absolutely smashed the like target of 500 likes on Thursday, I think it was. So let's try and get 600 likes this time. I would massively appreciate it if you could drop a like down below. But getting into the video and I'm sure you've all heard by now, look, we also did a live transfer show last night and talked about it. From the looks of things, Maurizio Sarri to Chelsea is off. But why is it off? Because good old Marina Granovskaya thinks she's smarter and tougher than everyone else in the world when she simply isn't. And I told you about this before. Maurizio Sarri had a buyout clause of 8 million euros at Napoli. Less than 7 million pounds, that is. And we didn't want to pay that. We offered them 4 million euros, which they turned down. Then they appointed Ancelotti, and Marina was like, well, if they have a manager, why on earth will we have to pay money to get their now former manager? And yes, you can see where she's coming from with that, but he still has a contract there. And contracts are contracts. That's just what it is, whether you think, you know, you should have to pay, or whether you think you shouldn't have to pay. It doesn't matter. If you have to pay, you have to pay. You know, if you think the chewing gum should be free, you can't just walk in the store and take it with you anyway, just because you think it should be free. It's not free, so you have to pay, that's just what it is. And in all honesty, we also screwed Maurizio Sarri, we didn't just screw ourselves, we didn't just screw over, you know, De Laurentiis and Napoli, but we also screwed over Sarri, who I kind of feel bad for in this situation, because he basically destroyed all of his relationships with Napoli, which is his boyhood club nonetheless, his wife and son worked there as well, and he tried to force himself out of there to join us, and we wouldn't even pay 8 million euros to get him, and have now left him stranded basically without a job, probably not getting a top job, unless Pochettino ends up joining Madrid, and then Tottenham might get Sarri, you never know, or Conte, you know, <laughs> could be the worst thing. Um, but, you know, we just left him, left him stranded, like, what are we doing? Like, do we have any sort of empathy for people? Like, it's just out of order that. But see, for me, just using logic, there is still a chance of Maurizio Sarri joining us. A small chance, but a chance nonetheless. But hear me out. I said something similar on Thursday as well. This is a massive game of chess or poker. I said Napoli can't afford to pay Sarri and Ancelotti. Sarri doesn't earn that much, so they can afford it. But ideally, they don't want to. And people have brought up the point that it's normal to pay off former managers on a monthly basis after sacking him. And Angelotti is still getting paid by Bayern Munich, for example. And that is true. But why is he still getting paid by Bayern Munich? Simply because Carlo Angelotti isn't employed by a club yet, by a new club yet, and hasn't been since he was sacked by Bayern. He has basically joined Napoli, but will obviously only sign his deal starting after the World Cup. There's no point before then, because there's no pre-season going on. So why would Napoli pay him now? And why would Ancelotti, you know, sign a new deal where he probably earns more at Bayern Munich anyway? So with very few exceptions, once a manager gets a new job, a new managerial job, he isn't entitled to the payout money from his former club anymore. So if Sarri joins Chelsea, Napoli don't have to pay him out, even if they sack him. So it's not like, you know, no matter what happens, they will always have to pay him out anyway. And like I said, it's a game of chess or poker, and I can see how Chelsea are doing their very best to make it seem like we don't want Sarri anymore. Of course, the story that we don't want him because of certain comments he made in the past are absolute horse crap. You don't get that far in trying to bring a manager in without knowing about these things. But we are trying to scare Napoli into thinking they're going to have to pay both managers when they could have just stuck with Sarri, who did an incredible job for them and is on a lot more money than Ancelotti will be on. At the same time, Napoli are doing everything to make Chelsea think that they don't mind paying Ancelotti and Sarri and they are trying to scare us into basically buying him off them. I still think Sarri's legal team is probably trying to get him out of Napoli, which is another reason why Ancelotti hasn't signed a deal at Napoli yet, because once Ancelotti signs a new deal, Sarri can sue Napoli, because he's contracted as the first team manager or head coach, and because of Carlo Ancelotti, he can't do the job anymore, so he has reason to sue, basically. After the release clause expired on May 31st, it's unlikely. But in my opinion, it's not completely out of the window. All of those things that I said, you know, we're trying to scare them of that, and they're trying to scare, you know, us of that. I don't know whether those things are true. That's just my head thinking that. Maybe I'm just, you know, clinging on to some sort of positivity, just hoping that we'll get Sarri. I don't know. But that's what I'm thinking anyway. I'm not saying that it's 100% what's happening. I'm just saying that's what I feel like could be happening. But either way, Marina Granovskaya still has to take the blame for it. And not for the first time. Getting Lukaku last year, she messed up. Same with Alexandra last year as well. The relationship with Antonio Conte, she messed up. Well, fair enough, Antonio Conte also played his part in that. And also the reason why Michael Minalo left 
was in all honesty, you know, a lot down to Marina Granovskaya as well. Marina is amazing at commercial work, you know, getting commercial deals and you can't take that away from her or fault her for that. The Nike deal, Yokohama, Hyundai, Carabao, Alliance Tires and so many other deals, she did very, very well to get them for us. But on the footballing side of things, managers and transfers, she's basically awful. We need a director of football and she needs to be stripped of some power. But she won't be stripped of any power. As long as Roman Abramovich owns the club, and especially as long as he's having political issues with the country, she has even more power. So I spoke a lot about Sari now and what I think could happen and what I think is happening. But say we won't get Sari, who will we get instead? And well, it looks like Laurent Blanc is the most likely option. I didn't know all too much about Blanc as a manager, so I did some research, and he is an awful. He is not awful. That doesn't mean I wouldn't prefer Maritia Sari to Laurent Blanc, but he still is an awful. He is, is an awful at all. As a manager, Laurent Blanc has only had three, you know, jobs so far, basically. He's been at Bordeaux, where he won the league, which was an incredible achievement, to be fair to him. Then he was with the French national team, where things didn't go, let's say, all so well. And then he was with PSG, where he became PSG's most successful manager, winning the league every year when he was there, unlike the new Arsenal manager in Emery, who failed to win it against Monaco in the 16-17 season. Laurent Blanc plays a 4-3-3 system, which is good, which I think suits us, which I think we need. We need that change, in my opinion. He plays attacking football, which is also good. But his system is a bit prone to counter-attacks, which isn't that good. And also he is a bit of a yes-man, especially seen by the situation with Serge Aurier at PSG, who called Blanc a fag, basically. But even with that, after the club told him Aurier has to play, he still played him. So he basically will do whatever the board tell him to do. In general, I don't see that as a good thing. But with our board, it's probably what we need to get some stability into the club. Because with Mourinho and with Conte, who were everything but yes men, we all know how that went. You know, they all had constant issues with them. And Laurent Blanc will basically, you know, from what it sounds like, the way he is, will basically just accept what he has, basically accept the players he gets and just work with them. Whether, you know, that will turn out to be the case, I don't know. But that's what, you know, the way he's, you know, handled managing so far. So, in a sense, that could be good because we need some stability in there. We can't keep this constant battle of power between the manager and the board going. We need some, you know, togetherness and we need to move forward as a club. Whether we will do that or not, it's a different story. But, you know, if the board and the manager don't work together, there's no chance of us doing that. Blanc, if you will, is the safe option. A manager that I think is good enough to get us into the top four if we do get a few good signings. Not even world-class signings, just a few good signings. Pont Blanc is more standard, easier to figure out for the other teams. But Maurizio Sarri is more out there. A very special type of football, a kind of new and exciting brand of football, which teams aren't used to at all. And Sarri would make us play better football and more exciting football than Liverpool and arguably even Man City. Liverpool didn't win anything by playing attractive and exciting football, but that's because they don't have winners in their team. And that's also because they have, you know, Loris Carriers in goal. But we still have winners, so in my opinion, Maurizio Sarri could win trophies with us. I think he would be able of doing that, but at this stage, we don't even know whether we'll find out or not. If you're one of those that don't want Sarri, because he hasn't won a trophy yet, well, you'd probably be happy with Laurent Blanc, because that's exactly what he has done. With Bordeaux, which is the impressive one, and then also with PSG. Earlier today, then also news broke that we're interested in the Fulham manager, Jokanovic. As that develops, we might speak about that more, but as for now, let's just leave it at the report saying we're interested. You know, let's just wait for more, you know, news to come out about that, basically, before we speak about that in depth. And just quickly, before finishing off this video, I see some people still saying, you know, just keep Conte. And while I don't necessarily want Conte to stay, it's irrelevant what any of us want. Conte doesn't want to stay at Chelsea, and the board don't want Conte to stay either. I mean, Chelsea offered Conte a long-term contract last summer, and he refused because he didn't want to stay here for long. He only took the pay rise, and, you know, if you watched his press conferences, if you watched all of his interviews throughout the season, you just get the feeling that he doesn't want to stay here. Yes, he didn't particularly say, specifically say, I want to leave. But, you know, I made this point on Twitter to someone as well. It's like when your girlfriend says, it's fine. You know full well it's not fine, even when she says it's fine. And that's kind of what Conte is giving off. He says, you know, I want to respect my contract. But you kind of know that he just doesn't. And, you know, the board don't want him here either, in my opinion. And with those things and with all of the problems that they've had over the year, I don't see how our board and Antonio Conte could ever work together productively again. I just don't see it. And if that isn't possible, what good could come from him staying? Except the likes of Hazard, William and plenty of others leaving as well, which really we can't do with, especially when we can't, you know, actually sign players or sign managers. So I don't I don't see any good coming from Antonio Conte staying. I understand why people would want him. You know, he's won two trophies and I'm very thankful for that. But that doesn't mean that it's 
it's the best thing for him to stay. Not in my opinion anyway. This video is already quite long, so I or we will speak about how Marino's dealings make us lose confidence in getting any sort of good players in another video in the days to come. Especially when you hear that she doesn't want to pay John Michael Seri's release clause of 40 million euros either. And I'm just thinking to myself, are we going to sign anyone that's not a free agent? Because if you hear we don't want to pay 40 million euros for a very, very decent midfielder, like, what are we doing? Just pay it and get him. Get him as quickly as we can because a lot of other clubs will try and get him as well. And even if you hear from reliable people that we're after big names, being after them and getting them are two very, very different things for us, especially with Marina in charge. But yeah, that's really it for me. Leave me all of your thoughts down in the comments section below. Do you still think Sarri could happen? Would you be happy with Laurent Blanc? Or, you know, do you want Conte to stay? Do you want Jokanovic? Just leave it all down in the comments section below. Like I said in the beginning, let's aim for 600 likes on this video. I would massively appreciate it if we could hit that. Don't forget to check out my social media, which is last 7 on both Instagram and Twitter. As you can see over here, I would massively appreciate it if you could follow me over there. And also, don't forget to subscribe to 100% Chelsea if you haven't already. And also, click the notification bell button and choose to be notified about all videos. Because if you don't, you will only know about half the videos you actually upload. And that's frustrating for both you and us, of course, as well. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Up the chills. And I'll see you next time.